Okay guys, this is the day after and I did add a little extra penicillium inside the mixture and now this is going to stay in the fridge for a few days and I'll tell you why. Uh, maybe even longer than a few days. I want it to start drying up on its own and as it dries up I'm going to fold it because what penicillin do penicillium does is it starts to grow between these cracks. So you want the mold to start growing and usually that takes a few days for it to happen. So by leaving it in the fridge the way it is without turning it into a cheese it has the ability to grow the bacteria. So uh, if I would make a, a disc right now and I make it nice and tight what's going to happen is um, it's basically going to uh, not have any blue inside the cheese. But by me leaving it the way it is, do you notice all the spaces and gaps in between it? Uh, it has a chance to start forming and having air pockets. And as this gets firmer, I'm going to be able to turn it into a disc. And then I am going to poke holes. But for now, we're just going to leave this in the fridge. It could take up, up to a week. And I have to play it by ear because my my paste was not as pasty because I added too much liquid like I mentioned earlier. So wish me luck guys. This is the third time I'm trying it and we'll see how that works for me. Okay guys, here we go. This has been, look how firm it is. It's been in the fridge now. Uh, let's see, Saturday, was it Saturday or Sunday? Sunday, Monday and today's Tuesday. Because it was so watery, uh, it needed a few more days. But what I did was, I just placed some plastic over it like this. I didn't cover it completely. And I had some paper towels, so nothing would fall over it. And it firmed up a lot. So now I'm going to be able to shape these into discs. So I am going to use my parchment paper or my wax paper. And I'm going to get some uh, cellophane. Now, if you have something um you could either do this by hand make your wheel or if you have um either a ramekin you could put some plastic in your ramekin this way you could just put your cheese in and you can stuff it uh, whatever is easiest for you to make this cheese but i'm going to try and freehand this and because my daughter wants big cheese i'm going to try and make it nice and big for her but i'm going to make more than I'm not going to make just one cheese. I'm going to make a few of them. So I'm going to I'm going to need a spoon. And I'm going to take. So it's nice and firm. Now if you really want to get picky. And you want to. Get the same size. All the way around. Uh, you can simply. Um, measure your cheese. But I really don't care what size they are. I can make it a little bigger than this for sure. She wants them big. Hopefully this will turn blue on me. Now I did say I was going to add some more of my powder to my cheese. And when you see if it's not perfectly packed in, that's okay too because that's going to help the blue grow in between the crevices of your cheese. Now normally I will put like a starch on this. And I'm just wondering if I should just leave it without the starch. There we go. Just push it down a little. There you go. So I'm going to get my penicillium. So I've been told we can make our own penicillium rather than buy it. Um, I have yet to try it, but I will try it. 
I just have to get a decent enough blue cheese to be able to uh, to be able to make it. Now this is expensive. It's about $35 plus. I think I put a link. If you guys go look, there should be a link on um, where to get it. Now I'm using it dry on top of my cheese. And like I said, I am going to try to make my own when I get a chance. But I'm hoping this cheese is going to come out because I said it's not the easiest cheese to do because you have to, once this starts getting a little blue on you, you basically have to break up this cheese and reshape it again. And that's where all the blue is going to start growing in between the cracks. So it is a process. And, um, like I said, I don't know how accomplished I was because I didn't get a chance to, basically, um, we ate it before it could actually turn as blue as we wanted. Now, uh, the trick is also you need to add some salt to this. God, it's so much easier to do the one I normally do with my spirulina. And the salt is supposed to help with the growth of the bacteria. Put that back in the container over the shoulder and I'm going to push this aside and make a new disc. Now I'm not worried about the shape of the disc because I do have to break that cheese down uh, once I start seeing some mold growing on it and then remold it again so I don't care what it looks like at this point. I could have probably just left it right in here let the mold grow and then form it into cheese. Too late, I didn't really think of it. Okay, we're going to get some big ones and then I'm going to make a smaller one. And that'll be my tester cheese, a smaller one. some nice sized cheese and you know what if it doesn't get moldy on me it's not the end of the world we're gonna eat this anyhow because it's gonna age nicely in the refrigerator so I'm just gonna put some more penicillium and apparently we don't need that much Cheese number two. Remember, it doesn't matter what it looks like at this point because you will, uh, here we go, salt. It doesn't matter uh, what it looks like at this point because you will have to break this down to be able to get the blue inside the cheese. I've done it with the poking of the holes, but it doesn't come out as great as we want it. So basically, we have to break this cheese down, take it apart, and then reshape it. But you have to have a good amount of blue on there for you to do it. Otherwise, the blue won't go into your cheese. So again, uh, you need to have the air pockets, I guess. That's what it comes down to. You need to have the air pockets so the blue could go into it. Okay, so we're going to push this one aside. So we've got two nice sized cheeses as requested. There we go. And this will be our last one. This is going to be a smaller cheese. I should get a spatula so I can pick it all up. Now, I already have penicillium in here, and I have yet to see any trace of blue. Maybe here and there I see a little bit, but not enough to say. I'm just wondering if the batch I got was a good batch. Because apparently, sometimes if it's not a good batch, it could be a dead culture. So we are going to try this again. I'm just wondering that the bit that I did see in my other cheese, if it wasn't the, the one that I did sprinkle on top and it never really got inside the cheese. It's going to be our tester cheese. Hopefully, 
we're going to be able to get this cheese nice and blue. And if not, oh well, we'll try again. I'm not going anywhere. There we go. And now this goes back into the freezer. You're supposed to refrigerate, uh, sorry, put this in the freezer so it doesn't uh, get ruined on you. But like I said, I have yet to see a good blue cheese yet. And like I said, you know what? It doesn't matter if it doesn't come out. I mean, you know what? The one I make is not the one that's made out of um, penicillin, but it's so good. And people that have had it actually thought it was real blue cheese because of the way I marbled it. And it's so delicious, too. Okay, so here's our penicillin. Now, I am hoping this is going to work out. A little sprinkle of salt Oop. now this needs to be covered I guess for the bacteria to grow but I'm not going to cover it there I'm going to put it in my box you know what I'm not going to do the box thing I am going to take my beautiful earthware I'm going to put some paper towels on top of it like this it's just going to be easier for me to flip my cheese. You see, it did have some blue. Do you see from uh, just waiting for the cheese to... I had it in the fridge. Like I said, I'm not worried about the shape. It doesn't have to be perfect because this will have to be broken down. And I'm looking. No blue there. And there's that one. Oh, put that and I fill them where it belongs, not on my fingers. And then there's the small one. Yeah. And we're just going to let this sit, but we're going to cover it so it will have moisture where the bacteria will start growing. So I am going to cover this in plastic. Now, if you have a large Tupperware, you could actually probably do it that way. Um, you know what? I want to keep that plastic up. Maybe I'll make some sort of tent. Okay, let's do this again. I want to try and keep this up. So I'm going to kind of make a tent for it. Now, if I had a clear plastic bag, I probably would have used my box that I normally store my cheese in. But since I don't have a big enough, I don't have a big enough plastic bag, I'm going to have to do it this way. So basically, uh, the shape doesn't matter because we will be breaking up this cheese. This cheese will be broken. Uh, we're going to have, um, we're going to take the cheese, we're going to break it up once I see the blue growing and then reshape our cheese again. But this is going to have to sit there for a couple of days and uh, start turning blue on me and hopefully it's going to work. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. That's the best thing I can do right now. So guys, I'll see you in a bit and I'll see if this is a flop or if this is actually going to work on me. Okay, so someone told me to start penicillium with bread and what I did was I didn't have any blue cheese to start off with but I added the penicillium right onto the bread and I figured with the moisture that it's in this container um, it should start growing if not well then I'm gonna have to wait to see if I can get some uh, some penicillium on my cheese and then spread it on the bread so I'm gonna give it a try this way I'm keeping my fingers crossed I figure if I close this container up that bread will get moldy so fingers crossed guys we'll see what happens so I'll see you in a few days and I'm gonna show you what that cheese looks like see you in a bit guys <laughs>